down, Jeff Wilson, and he strolls in for the Dolphins touchdown. <laughs> Let's go! How about them fans? We definitely got a lot of offense here today. Jeff Wilson Jr. dives into the tank. How you feeling, man? Oh man, blessed, man. Blessed and highly favored, man. Yes, sir. Man, yes, sir. Highly favored. I love it. Yes, sir. It's good stuff. I love it. So you grew up in Texas, small town in Texas, from what I understand, and tried to do a little bit of research. There was a move at some point, maybe moved in with Pops and, and uh, at, at, during high school. Was that your junior year in high school? Mm, Is that uh, accurate? No, nah, it was uh, uh, middle, school. It, middle was, school. it was in middle school when I actually um, ended up moving back with my dad okay. before the start of uh, my eighth grade year. So, okay. Yeah. Tell, tell us about where you grew up and the decision to make that move. And then, you know, I know your dad played. He was a running back, right? He, he played college ball and was a running back just the impact he had on you as a football player and, and as a man. It was kind of different for me growing up because, um, like I said, a lot of people don't know, like I stayed in the city and in the country. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I've always had the best wells. And before I moved back with my pops, I used to always go visit like every weekend because it was only like a two hour drive from, from Dallas to East Texas. But going and dealing with the country life and the city and, and mixing those like, and, and the journey that I was headed on as far as football, it, it couldn't have happened any other, any other way for me. That, that was like perfect because I was around, I got started being around people that, that, was, that was higher up in their jobs and, and, in, their, and in their occupancies of what they did. And then I, was, it's, I got people that I got teammates that I have to deal with and they all come from different backgrounds and ways. And it was sometimes it was people I didn't like and they didn't like me, but we have to put those different. So going to the city and in the country, I had to kind of do that because when I came to the country, I was a city guy, you right, see what right, I'm saying? Right, right. And then when I was in the city, I'm the country guy, right. you know what I mean? So it was just kind of like playing back and forth, both of those, but I never had a problem adapting to either one. So I kind of, I kind of knew that was kind of gonna be a good thing for me, and my pops told me that as well growing up. So, yeah. you know, and then he got a he um going to UTA. You know, he always tell me he would have been in the league if they program when it got cut. So, <laughs> I mean, right, right, right. Hey, hey man, like I said, it's a big question mark. You know, I just yeah. wish they had some more fans. Nobody could call him out on right, it now. Man, right, I, can't, I, can't. I believe him. Hey, shoot, I, I got the ability. It came from somewhere, That's right? That's right. But yeah, no, nah, but um, but just being him and uh watching that and always hearing. Throughout my hometown, I guess he was a, a pretty good player where we came from. So everybody, your dad, your dad, your dad. So that kind of just like drove me like, man, I've never seen it, but I want to say I'm, 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 I'm that guy. You know what I mean? I want to say, man, you you was better than your dad coming out. So that kind of kind of what drove me and gave me that ambition to be one of the best. Also having Adrian Peterson coming out and giving you another perspective right out of our hometown. So it's like. Man, I gotta. I want those. I want. I want those same effect that those guys and my dad gave to those people when I come out. So that, that's what pushed. Your father, at least what I read, was he when he trained you. <laughs> he had some unique yeah. uh, training techniques that yeah. you had to go through. Yeah, Is that, I, I mean, like cement weights and. Yeah, man. We we had uh, like I said, man. If you're from the country, I've been <laughs> anywhere around there, man. You don't have a lot of access to the things that other people do. So yeah. we would just find stuff old. There's car. no orange theory or anything there, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just it's just to find it and go to work, man. You know. And, and my pops growing up when they was coming, he was always like, "We ain't never had weights. We ain't never had weights. We ain't never lived weights." We ain't. So he always he would find old car park, whatever, man. So yeah. he just put us to work and we'd get to the point where I, I almost like didn't want to call him dad anymore, you know what I mean? But hey, it paid off, it worked out, man. And, and I thank him and I wouldn't go back and change any of it. Yeah, that's what's up. So you mentioned Elkhart High School, you know, small two-way school where you were dominant, dominant, dominant. But then when college came around, you know, there wasn't a lot of heavy recruiting. And so you do go to University of North Texas. How did that, that small, school grind mold your, your your work ethic and then how much of that do you use now to uh today in your your grind going into your sixth year in the nfl uh you know um even though i was at my high school and i was i did good and around my area if you was around that you knew me you knew what i did you know i was a good football player but at the same time like you said coming out and and not not getting those getting those scholarships or getting those offers you know it just kind of kind of put a fire under me, you know what I mean? Like, why, why I ain't getting no Big 12 or no SEC, you know what I mean? I feel like these, my stats was wrong with my stats, you know what I mean? But, you know what I mean, you can't control none of that. So it was just the fact of like, 
nah, this ain't enough. Me wanting, I want people to change before me is not working. So I've got to do something where people cannot deny me in no kind of way. And then that just kind of helped like flip my mindset. And like the first three struggles, like going down and being like, it reminded me, it was just like a reflection of each other. So I was just like, man, it's something that got to breaking. And then it eventually did, and when it did, I just never looked back. I tried to keep going and eventually came back around later on, but hey, that's another <laughs> story. Always does, right? right. Yes, Always does. So well, let's, talk, let's talk about that, North Texas, and you know, Juice talks about balling out in high school. Your last two years at North Texas, 2,100 rushing yards, 30 touchdowns. I mean, you were doing your thing. Draft comes, the draft goes, and, and you're not drafted. And I heard you on Bring the Juice on that podcast, and you said, I was even considering Canada at some point. Like, yeah. And what really jumped out to me, Jeff, was you said that you knew that you were the only person in your family that had the potential to change everything for everyone. Yes, was that the thing that drove you regardless of all these different obstacles that you had to face? Oh yeah, most definitely because like now it's my son, most definitely, hands down. But before I had my son, I had, I had my family and, and we had our problems that we dealt with before he even got here. So he just added uh, like, he just poured a bunch of gasoline right, on the fire, right. you know what I mean? They but, have a tendency to do that. But yeah, like it's, it's my family, and you know, and, and I'm still, and I still don't, you know what I mean? And that's not, that's cliche because all that's not on me. That's not my duty to take care of everybody, you know what I mean? That's And that's not gonna happen as much as I want to. Or uh, I'll be in the bind, you know what I mean? That's just right. reality. But it's just like, I know like, like my family, like, man, uh, $100 can help my family. So I just felt like, I need to get to where I can get that hundred dollars and I can make sure I can send it if it's just so needed. You know what I mean? Even if it's not, I'm not gonna sing just like this, but I just wanted to be that person in my family because I know my father wanted to be that person. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And me looking so much up to my father, I know like if I do that, he gonna feel like he did it. So basically like me and my dad, we pretty much walked this journey together, man. Yeah. So like that's pretty much what sort of did it for me. That's interesting. You know, you, you said something earlier about, you know, kind of in a funny way that everybody said, oh, your dad, your dad, he was this great player and you wanted them to recognize your greatness. But then you fast forward to, wow, I have this opportunity to do this thing that he hasn't done. That's a, that's an interesting way to look at things. And so uh, I know you said, obviously you can't sit there and provide for everybody all day long, but you at that time felt that there was that potential, that there was that potential to get somewhere that nobody else has gone. No, yes sir, yes sir. Had to get that. Had to, yes, not, not a could, but yeah, had to. Had to, had to. You know, let's, let's go back a little bit, Jeff. Let's go back to pre-draft. And um, you're like one of 32 teams actually sent someone out to, to, to see you. And the 49ers sent one of their two run game specialists out there, a guy by the name of Mike McDaniel, Perhaps you guys have heard of. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, so. I mean, I think right? so, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've, we've heard heard you talk about this meeting before, but at this stage of your your NFL journey and all that you know that's taking place, can you reflect upon how you connected with Coach McDaniel? And actually, can you just tell us how much that has meant to your career and, and of course, your livelihood? Man, I would say, and like I just told this story many times, but like Mike was really like. The light at the end. I love of the, that part. First of man, all, Mike. I'm telling you, like yeah. Mike, he was really the light at the and like and I love the 49ers and everything they did me. But like I said, the person that came to me and talked to me at that time, it was Coach Mike McDaniel. So like I went through so much during that process, even before I even got to that process, all the injuries in college, then then getting flagged, and then uh, the weight and then the question, oh, you might get in, you might not. So everybody else already working and grinding, doing that, they, they solidified and happy. And I'm always like on the back burner, you know what I mean? So it was just like, I just got to a point where I feel like, man, is is they even gonna come for me? Like I said, I'm, I seen the Canadian scouts right. at, 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 our, at, our pro, at our pro day. So like I said, I, I really like, people probably say I wouldn't even consider, but at me, I love the game so much and I wanted to get, I would have took that route at that sure. time just to get back to where I needed to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when, when Mike came, man, it was just, it wasn't even like like the football stuff, man. It was just like the energy I felt from him. Cause like, I'm a Scorpio, so I'm an energy person. Like I like to feel vibes and energy, you know what I mean? So like, and you can't sugarcoat that with me. If you're not, I'm, I'm gonna feel that and I'm gonna know. Like, I'm gonna still hee hee ha with right, you, right. but I know, you know what I'm <laughs> right. saying? This is real, this is the bottom line. But yeah. when Mike came in, man, it was just like, 
I don't know, I just felt some kind of like genuine, like it was just genuine. Like, and he didn't even, he didn't even know me, man. Mike could have walked in, worked me out, sat out and flew right back out, walked back. All the things he did wasn't mandatory for him to do. He could have came to see me, called him. Hey, this, well, he came back up, sat down, talked to me, man. And he just told me things that he really don't know that, that helped me like prolong me and get to where I'm am today. You know what I mean? So that's why I said it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know what I mean? Crazy that, that it all came back in full circle. And now we, we right back at here at the, at the tip of our careers. You know what I mean? And, and we are everybody trying to do something special. So what you say, he told you things that he doesn't even know impacted you in that way. What, give us an example, man. It was just like, stay encouraged you know the the the, the cliche you know what i mean but it's at the time though you have to understand oh, he was the only person saying it that you gotta you gotta think that it's, we on the field he telling man that's a good route man i like the way you ran it oh let me see you run this denny laughing he make like at the same time he working me but we on the field we having fun like like i'm enjoying doing it but at the same time it didn't even feel like i'm getting scouted to go to the nfl right. it just felt like a Another day on the field, another boy doing his thing, playing with his dad. That's that's what it felt like at that time, you know what I mean? So once you get past all that, you do get your chance. Practice squad, active roster, now you're, you know, a key part of that offense. And and he is consistently your guy, you know, because run game coordinator, offensive coordinator. Was there a moment in that journey when you guys were together in San Francisco where you were like, this guy could be a head coach? Oh, yeah, man. It was... It was, like I told you, that's what was weird, and I'm not trying to be clear. It was from when he came into North Texas. In from that what, moment? From that you moment. You saw head coach I on. told you, you got to I'm an energy person. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I just felt something about him that was wow. different. Like, and I talked to a couple people on the phone, like, you know what I mean? Even then, like, you know what I mean? Like, even though, I'll give you a prime example. Coach Turner, Coach Bobby Turner, he's one of the greatest running back coaches that ever come through the NFL. Like, from hearing him on the phone, I already knew that he was going to be a man about his business and he not playing games, and and if and he, and he'll do whatever he got to do, you know what I'm saying, to to win, you know what I mean? And and not, not in, like, in a bad way. He going to always look out for his people because – I can call Coach Turner right now right on this interview and he'll answer. You know what right. I mean? Like, <laughs> just that whole thing, man. Like, I don't know. I just felt it from him. Like, yeah. he's like, like, just like him. You know what I mean? You probably had your your people saying, like, you're going to do something special. And that's kind of like what it was. Like, and I didn't even tell him, but it was just a feeling that I got from him. You know wow. what I mean? But now that you see that and you spent the time you spent with him at, when he was at these different levels of his coaching journey, and now that you got to spend a few months, not a full season yet, but a few months with him as a head coach, what lived up to the expectation of what you thought he would become as a head coach? Because any time you take that next step in whatever your profession is, you have to not necessarily change who you are, but you have different responsibilities. And so he probably has to do things now that he didn't have to do when he was your running, running game coordinator. What has lived up to the expectation? What has exceeded the expectation of what you saw with him as a head coach? For you to come in and grab a, a group of men that early and, and make them get behind you and follow you, obviously with the help of your coaches and staff and everybody around the facility, but if you can get a group of men to believe in you and follow you that fast, that speaks for itself. It's yeah. the energy. Yeah. It speaks for that itself. Energy. Keep bringing that energy, right? Yeah. You know, there's another familiar face in the building, you know, when you ride in Miami. And that's the other half of this, that this running back dynamic duo, yeah. of course, and that's Raheem Mostert. Nah, for real. You know what I mean? And I, I remember that Raheem, that you shared that Raheem, when you first got to San Francisco, was the first one to take you out to eat, mm. you know, first one to, you know, sit down and basically give you the, the ins and outs and, you know, really how to be you know, successful in the NFL. And here you are six years later and you guys are, you know, back at it and still doing it and having a huge impact on the field. Talk about your relationship with Raheem. And, and how unique it is, and more importantly, you know, how special that partnership has been. It's like you get to play in the league with your actual brother. It's like somebody that you like, like grew up with and like, hey, we had plans, man, we're gonna both be in, we're gonna do this and that, do this and that. So like, that's kind of kind of what it is with, me, with him. And, and more so of that, he's like, he's like a true big brother. You know what I mean? Like he, he shows the rope, he, he's, he's genuine, he's kind, he's not selfish. You know, you have some guys be self like, He's not selfish at all, kind of hearted, beautiful family. Like I call his sons my nephew, he calls my son his nephew, you know what I mean? So like when I say it's like a real brotherhood, it's a real brotherhood. I don't know, he probably already knew what I was going through because I was undrafted. So obviously I wasn't just having anything like that, you know what I mean? I'm come from a country, you know, he probably just 
he probably can see my frustrations without me even telling him because he's been in a situation before, you know what I mean? So for just for him to go out of his way to do that alone, just for, hey, Jeff, I'm coming out to center. He see me standing at the thing before we get ready to call. Hey, man, come hop in. I'll take you home. I ain't going, where you going? I'm on the other side. Man, it don't matter still. Come on, I got you. Like, now, you know what I'm saying? That's Raheem. Like, and like like his wife, he got a beautiful wife, man. Like, like, like they're very compatible. Like, they work together, man. It's just like, the whole family, man, like the whole motion, man. I got nothing but love for that whole family, and I'll always be here if they ever need me in any kind of way, and that's what kind of love we got. I love that too, Juice, yeah. because, you know, a guy shows up in your same position, same whether position, he's drafted yeah. or a free agent guy or whatever it is, he could he could sit there and just look at you as competition. Yeah. It's just wild to me that you had this experience with Coach McDaniel, you had this experience with Raheem, you built that bond with them, and then, you know, they're gone, yeah. but yet, that's so everything happened for a reason, man. That is wild. Everything happened for a reason. Yeah. I say in due time, baby, in due time. Yeah, well, we like that reason down here. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely like that here. reason. Yes, you were asked to describe your running style, and here's what you said. I'm downhill. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like to, to play too many games. You know what I mean? I like to, to get to where I'm going and, and get there as fast as I can, and that's how I kind of take it. Where did you develop that style? And, you know, what type of a mindset does it take to have in this league to play one of the most physically demanding positions in one of the most physically demanding sports that there is and to, to have that mindset? I'm not here to play games. I'm going to get where I need to get in a hurry. Uh, like you said, it's just kind of revert back to me and my family. You know what I mean? I know that's the, that's the best way for me to do what I need to do for them. And like like I said, watching Adrian Peterson run growing up from high school, like when I said I literally watched every yeah, almost every games. one of his high school <laughs> games, man, and like he's taking it to people, he's breaking the runs, he's making the crowd go, ooh, ah, like all that. I'm paying attention to all that. I felt yeah. it. And I always wanted the same thing. You know what I mean? And like to do that, like that's what I said. Like, if I ever get a chance to play in the league, like I promise you, I'm gonna make people feel me. And the drive is like the same time when I was going through those combines, you got people getting drafted from one all the way through seven that play running back. So it was just like, I was tanked like that, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, that always adds fuel to my fire. Like, even to this day, like, I'm still not where to go because our people, I feel like people still don't respect me the way they should. And before I'm done and before I leave this, I promise you they will. What you guys are doing now is an offense. And what uh, your Coach McDaniel, uh, Tua, the wideouts, you and Raheem at running back, man. I mean, it is uh, it's really unbelievable to watch, and we get really excited about it. But now you've added some more. Going into this next season, you've added more weapons to this team. How do you guys personally, you know, put all the stuff that we expect from you guys aside, and not just on the potential part of it, which it is for us, but actually go to work and maximize what could happen for this team as an offense? We know what we have in-house. And like you said, if we steady add. You know what I mean? So steady get dealt. Like, it's only going to make it that much sweeter for, for us and our side of the ball. You know what I mean? But like I said, besides all that, we have to go to work at the same time. Everybody knows what expected and everybody knows what they want to do and everybody knows the direction they want to go. And that's where everybody headed. You know what I mean? Rather, it's not all pieces of cream yet or it's not the way we all want it yet. But it's the fact that people are going in the same direction. And that's that's the major key. I and mean, that's going to be the key to our offense this year. I like that. I love the depth. I love the competition that's probably out there. Yeah, We've got I'm guys bad. in all these positions. It just makes us better. Yeah. It just makes us better sure. as a team, man. And as an offense, you can't have enough weapons. No, not at all, man. Like I said, this is a crazy game. You know, this is the NFL. Like, yeah. if you just say every player you got going to play all 18, 17 games, we completely help you not miss one shift. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. it's the league. So. Yeah, they move. Yeah, they got way more games than we had. To play. Come on, now. come on. Now. So, <laughs> hey, ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with Delp, man. At <laughs> That's all. The truth. Nothing wrong with Delp. Obviously, as Juice just said, big expectations for the offense as a whole. What about you? What kind of expectations does Jeff Wilson Jr. place on himself on the field and off the field? Man, I'm just to a point now in my life. I just want to really, really be the best in everything I do. And and when I say be the best, now I can really say that because I really don't care about my failures anymore. Like I'm not I'm not an undrafted rookie anymore. I, I'm I'm not a guy that just came in and has zero tape. I'm not a guy that come in that's 
that's that's penny pension again, like penny pension now, or, or, or stressed out because you know what I mean. He got just had a son, and he got to take care of doctor bills and still pay rent. And I, I'm not at that point anymore. So now I can really put everything into my craft, everything into my game, and everything into my work, and that's on and off the field. So that way, when they do get off the field, shoot, I'll be ready to to go again. I know where I want to go and being the best, you have to do everything that it comes dates with being the best. So that's main so where it is and that's where I'm at now and, and I know God gonna put me wherever he may and everything happen the way it's gonna happen. All right, Jeff, we already we went through some serious stuff now. You know, now we're gonna get to the part where we have a little bit of fun with yeah. you, man. We have, we're having fun. Don't don't get it twisted. Uh, right now, no doubt. And uh, you know, I told you I love offense and you know offensive firepower. Yeah. And there's no more exciting parts of of a game than offense than the two minute drill. Oh, so on, you're gonna now. be part of the, the fish tank two minute drill. Oof, let's so we're do gonna it. do. I know they take that deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> like, so what are you about to do? Yeah. 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 That's the test. I man. love it. So we're gonna put two minutes on the clock, okay. and we're gonna fire some quick hitter quick hitter questions at you. You know, just react, you know, just read and react like you do as a running back, okay. you know what I mean? All right, okay, here we go. We have seen videos recently of you having incorporated boxing into your off-season training regimen. Who is your favorite boxer of all time? Muhammad Ali. Oh, man, I nice. like this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew Ali. I liked this guy. <laughs> Muhammad Ali. The right. GOAT, yeah. the true GOAT, absolutely. All right, all right. We got Keep that right hand. Don't tell you that. <laughs> that guy well, starts throwing well, them back. <laughs> after, after a full workout, them things get to drop. Keep that right out. Okay. Uh, All right. So I understand you dabble in freestyle rap game. Who is the greatest rapper of all time? And what is your MC name? I would say I grew up in the country, so we liked a lot of chop and screw music. So I would say Big Mo, especially freestyle. Like you cut on the instrument, you sit in the car, you just. You big mo beat, everybody just I'm from East Texas, so like we real big on that. So like screw and chop, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. It's more so Houston, but East Texas gravitates to it too. So just hearing that I, I would probably say Big Mo because he could just he was the first person I know could just get on a song and like rap for like five minutes straight. Right. And like be ready to, to loop the beat and go again. Right, so like, right, right. You know right. what I mean? That was just always interesting to me. So what's your MC? Kind of what's your what's your MC name? I ain't got one. Hefe. Nah. Hefe. 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 Yeah, it's got to be. That's it, man. It's That's it, man. That's all I had to say. It had to be. Last question, all right? Your father taught you how to play drums, and you've even joined him and his band, The Communications, right? Mm -hmm. On stage. Yes, uh, okay, then. If you start a band with Dolphin teammates, uh, we know you're on the drums, but who else makes the rest of the crew? Mm, that's cool. I'm going a, I'm to a have, I'm going to definitely have tour. I'm going to have tour. He gonna be my um, lead singer slash Two guitarist. Okay. He gonna be my lead singer. I'm gonna have Beth. I'm gonna have Bethel because he he's musically inclined too. And uh, uh, who else would I have? Who What's else Bethel playing? Oh, uh, we we gonna substitute on the drum. Okay. 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 We both we both play the drum. I just found it out yesterday, man. He plays yeah. the drums. He plays wow. the drums. Yeah, Doesn't he plays the drums. Doesn't mind sharing the backfield. Yeah, yeah. He, he plays the drums. He okay. plays. The, he said he played the guitar a little bit too. Okay. So so I mean I probably have Beth on guitar. Since he, uh, since he had a little um, familiarity with that. It was somebody else that told me the other day too, they played the piano a little bit. Jay, I can't think, it was like a, it was like a, a, it was like a week ago. I know Jaden does, but yeah, Jaden got to come too, yeah. Jaden okay. gonna be in the group. He can be on the keys, but it was somebody else I talked to too. I gotta yeah, figure that out. Now we gotta we figure it out. Yeah, I gotta figure it out. Yeah. Got nobody in there yeah. running around the locker room singing. Like there's usually we had a couple guys other than two of that they, they think they can sing. Uh, not None two. of them can really. Well, but. think they can sing versus right. being in his yeah. band. Is it? <laughs> I would say the one do that because like I would say two because like he like I I just he really he likes to sing though. Yeah. He he type walking around the house singing like that's that's two like yeah for sure. So love that. Know. And what's the name of this band? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's thinking. Two minutes is long. Hard rock. <laughs> hard rock. Hard rock. Hard rock. That's the two minute drill in about six and a half minutes. It doesn't matter. That's it's par from the course. Man, True. this lived up to expectations. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. really excited about yeah. this one. I appreciate it. It was worth uh, the wait for uh, sure. Was there for, and uh, sorry, you know, we look that. forward to seeing what you do this year. Yes, sir. Appreciate that, boss. Thank yeah. you, man. Thank, Thank you all for having me. Hey, for thanks for, for diving in, Jeff. Yes, sir. No problem. Anytime. Anytime.